Hello. Oh, it works. Hello, everybody. Um, JavaScript fatigue, all I can suggest is to take a nap. Um, so, hello, everybody. My name is Hans. I'm um, an, an engineer, a software engineer at Google. I worked uh, mostly on the uh, CLI and also on uh, Material. Um, and I want to talk. To, I want to start this talk by talking a little bit about an Angular uh, story, an Angular One story. I don't know if anybody of you have heard of Angular One. Um, it, it was a nice framework. It was a really nice framework. Uh, but and like two years ago, I discovered Angular One and was like, "Whoa, they're blowing me away! Like this is the greatest thing ever." And so I um, started building an app for it and. Um, um, so I got to get started with Angular 1, and what do you need to get started? Well, like every app, you basically build an index.html, and then you create a new file, you do a basic like angular.module, and then you do like angular.directive, angular.stuff, and then what? Um, well, then, then you're kind of stuck, because you have like uh, an index, and you want to build like something that's great, you have this vision in your head, and um, you end up, you know, how do I get from like the tutorial, the to-do list or whatever, to this dream that I have? Um, well, there's a few solutions. Like the first solution is, of course, do it yourself. You got to, you know, find a server for local development. You start a server, you spin up a server. You realize that your app is actually more complex than a to-do list. Uh, so you get a build system and then you get a bundler and then you read the manual for the build system and your bundler and then uh, you download a sample configuration that does not fit your need, and then you try to read the manual of that, and then you forgot about testing, so you start like putting specs and then configuring Karma, and it's the same story over and over, you read the manual, and you try to do it yourself, and you realize that like life is really complex, and these tools are all like complex and complexly integrated with each other. They're not easily integrated, so, the solution number two is to go online and get a seed. Uh, all of you have probably used a seed before, or at least seen one in your life. It's not really a rare sight. Um, so which one? There are hundreds, if not thousands, of Angular 1 seeds. There's starting to be like a few dozen Angular 2 seeds. Um, so you pick one, and then you look at the dependencies, and you're like, well, some of them have 80 dependencies. Um, can I remove one of them? Can I do something else? And then you realize that their build does not work with your files because you're using like some kind of stylus or SAS or something like that. And well, it just happens that they don't support that. So you have to do it yourself again. Or you, the seed uses stuff that you don't want. Like you want to use less, they use SAS. And can I remove the SAS dependencies? Well, it turns out that some files depends on it. And, it just becomes like a little bit more complicated. So you still need to understand the build, you still need to understand the testing, you still need to understand the tool chain. And some seeds make the choice for you, but of course, like, do you want to use Gold? Do you want to use Grunt? Do you want to use Webpack? Do you want to use NPM? Do you want to use Batch Script? I can go on. Like, these tools, there's like a lot of them. And finally, you just flip the table. We all felt that single thing where you want to take your computer and throw it out the window and uh, let the first person on the street pick it up and get it home for free. Um, so what you're doing basically is yak shaving. So for those who don't know, yak shaving is um, the process of doing something unrelated to your actual solution. So you actually need to do steps to get to work on the solution, so it's work that's not really needed if you think about it, but that you need to do to get to work on the stuff that's needed. For example, spending like five days configuring a build system, you're not working on your actual app, which is actually what you wanna do, but it's needed. So, really it comes down to like, you wanna abstract those pieces and those seeds and those do-it-yourself solution they don't abstract anything. It's not an abstraction if you hide nothing. Your emperor is still naked, like you still see everything. Even if you pretend to put clothes on it, you still have to understand what's going on there. 
and you end up having the same problems over and over. So the solution, the seeds don't work because they provide a project fixed in time. Your project is not fixed in time. Your project evolved with you. So they don't understand your application. The solution is in tooling. You need to basically encapsulate those tools and hide them from you so that you don't have to think about them. So you can start working on your app. The CLI, the Angular CLI, when I say CLI, I'm not talking about anything else, by the way, just so you know. It understands your project and it evolves with your application. It modifies your application. It lets you modify your application too and then the CLI will understand your changes and will evolve with it. Um, so you basically give the CLI your intentions and we'll come back to that. Um, and the CLI will transform your project to fit your needs. And this is really important because all those tools out there right now, when you have to configure them, you're actually telling them your intentions, but in a static way. You're saying like, well, I want this, but really you're not, you're not, what you want is the end project, product. You don't want the steps in between. And the CLI, you just say, I want this end product. And the CLI will configure everything to get you there without you even uh, ever noticing. Um, so for example, you want to get started with a new project. So you do ng new my project and it creates a new directory with everything in it. And it's basically a full working uh, basic app that just shows up with a single component and a single module and the bootstrapping code and the webpack configured and, every, and your test configured and you st can start just coding your app, which is really what you want. You want to build, well you just build, you ng build and you want to build for pro pro uh, production, you can ng build environment production, target production or just dash dash prod. Um, and uh, we'll get back to environment and targets, but basically this gives you an, a, a full optimized build without you having to do anything about it. Your intention is to debug locally, so you just ng serve, it serves your application right there, right then, and if you have a backend, you can actually pass a proxy to that backend and it will work right away. Your intention is to unit tests. So you want to run the test. You don't want to configure Karma. You don't want to have like anything to do like that. What you want is to actually build, uh, build your app, run Karma, and get the result. So you do ng test, and that's exactly what happens. Uh, your intention is to end-to-end -end test. Same thing. You don't have to think about Protractor. You don't have to think about the, the configuration of Protractor. The CLI understands your app. It understands where is your end-to-end -end test, where are your page objects, and all that and it basically run end-to-end -end for you. And you want to create new code. No apps is just a to-do list, so you want to create like new stuff, so you want to scaffold, you can call like ng generate, and it will um, start generating stuff. Um, for example, you can generate components. You can generate new components. You can generate new uh, classes, new um, directives, new enums, uh, new modules, uh, pipes. So you don't have to remember like, how oh, do I create a pipe? You ng generate pipe, you pass in the name of the pipe that you want and uh, it will create the files. The pipe will work and then you just go in and it's configured already, it's part of your module. We'll talk a, bit, a little bit about that. And you can just start using it. Services as well. So you basically just ng, ng generate module other for example, you can pass the routing flag, which does uh, add routing to your module. It creates like a routing configuration that's basic and then you can just fill it in. If you don't pass routing, it's just gonna create like an empty module. Um, and uh, it will create the module, it will create like an empty component for you, that's the base of the module. Um, and then you can generate a component, other slash component, and it will create that component and it will, uh, you, you can pass flags to inline templates, inline styles, uh, you can pass spec uh, equal false to not generate unit tests, sometimes you want to create a component and not have like the unit test files around. And it creates that, exactly that. You can also pass configuration if you want to use CSS, CSS, SAS or less. 
Um, and it also like, it's also smart in a way that if you create a new component, it's gonna add it automatically uh, to, the, um, to the module that's the closest to it. Uh, there's a flag to prevent that, but by default it's gonna create, it's gonna take your module, so that's the other module that we just created, for example, and it will add the, the import statement, it will add the declarations, and you don't have to do anything like uh, about it. It's, it's basically like our um, refactoring code, our, re our internal refactoring tools that basically call, create all the declarations, fi figure out your code, and then use some magic to basically just add it to your file. Um, and then the CLI manages your project your tool chain because you should not have, you should not have to manage your project yourself. You should, well, you should not have to manage your tool chain yourself, sorry. Um, you should focus on your code. Um, so some features that comes out of the box with the CLI is, like I said, less uh, SAS. It understands that. It transpile TypeScript. It also bundle uh, your code so you have like uh, just a single file to uh, deploy to production. It optimizes your assets. If you're using like uh, PNG that are small enough, uh, it will like maybe inline it in your HTML. Um, it allows you locally to have like li live reloads when you debug so that when you change a file, it recompiles and then reload your browser uh, so you just have to go back to your browser and suddenly the page is updated. It understands uh, production and development configuration. We have what we call an uh, environment file that um, contains configuration that will be included uh, depending if you put env environment equal prod, environment equal dev, or you can also provide your own uh, if you have like a test environment that you wanna use. And uh, it, use, it allows for ahead of time entry shaking. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, which are basically two features that allows you to have like small and fast uh, bundles and applications. Um, ahead of time, compilation. So it's the stepping stone, like I just said, it's the stepping stone to make your bundles smaller and faster to initialize. It basically get rid, you can, get, you can compile your templates offline so that it, just, it generates a uh, TypeScript code that will be compiled and bundled together. And it allows you to remove the creators and remove um, links to modules and components that are not used. And so when you don't use a component, it's not the code that makes that component is actually not gonna be part of your um, bundle, of your build. And um, that, makes it, uh, it also makes, because there is no template to compile online, it also removes all the compiler uh, code from Angular. It reduces Angular to being basically just a few Ks, and then your app takes up like a few more Ks, and that's how you can get like apps that are around like 50 Ks or 60 Ks. And uh, this is really like the stepping stone to having fast apps, because since you don't have to compile anything, when the bundle gets, when your Angular app gets bootstrapped, you, uh, you basically just already have everything compiled, so it takes like a microsecond to bootstrap your app. The big step, the big load time that exists at bootstrap is mostly taken by um, compilation, and you don't have that because you, do, you did it in, uh, ahead of time. So in the CLI, uh, we have a separate flag when you build and you serve for uh, using uh, ahead of time, it's the AOT uh, flag. So you call ng build dash dash AOT. You don't have to use the prod build. I used it here because ahead of time normally should be uh, mostly done for build pro build process for build uh, builds for prod builds. Sorry, and. Um, uh, this enables uh, ahead of time compilation and it does a lot of things. It reduces your bundle size. Uh, we add an app that was reduced from like one megabyte before uh, to like 500 kilobytes after. So it, 
can reduce your apps significantly, even more when you're using libraries and you're just using parts of it. Everything else gets uh, removed. Um, we also publish the plugin, so we use Webpack to build, and so in the CLI we use Webpack to build your app and bundle it. And we, um, we created a plugin uh, for performing ahead of time, and we're publishing that plugin also so that you guys, if you use Webpack and you don't want to use the CLI, uh, you can actually use AOT and uh, tree shaking. Um, we provide that to you easily using at ng tools slash webpack. Um, and in your webpack config, you just basically use the loader that comes with it and then use the plugin itself with your configuration to your TS config and your uh, main.ts. And we also refactor your bootstrap file um, using the same refactoring tools that we talked about, uh, that I talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, using the same uh, refactoring tools, we basically uh, transform your uh, main.ts, your bootstrapping code. So this is, this is the bootstrapping code that is by default in a new uh, CLI app. Uh, those of you who use the CLI will recognize that code. This is dynamic, this is using JIT, this is, this is not using ahead of time. So what we do is basically we change that code automatically so you can like move everything around, have your own logic in there and it's not gonna be touched. And then we use the ng factory that we just generated by building your module ahead of time. And we, uh, we refactor your bootstrapping code so that we call the right bootstrapping and you, don't, you, you can still get your main.ts as uh, a JIT main.ts, and when you build, before bundling everything together, we'll make it an ahead of time main file for you for free. And of course, we don't do that if we detect that you already have an ahead of time main. Uh, some apps have like two mains and they pick between the two. Uh, and if we detect that like you're already using ahead of time uh, bootstrapping code, we just ignore it. We just don't do anything. Um, that same Webpack tool actually allows you to uh, separate bundles based on lazy loading. So lazy loading is another tool uh, made available to you to, um, to keep your bundle size a little bit smaller. So you build routes and then you say that one route should be lazy loaded. So what the Webpack tool will, will do is look at all your code, understand your apps. Again, it's really like uh, all about like understanding what you're trying to do. And um, it will get the, the routes that are lazy using little children, for example, and it will separate the bundles, separate the Webpack bundles and the output to, have, uh, to put that JavaScript somewhere else. And again, because uh, we, do the, we do it in a smart way, if you have like a route that uses like a button, for example, and another route that uses like a checkbox, and they don't use each other's like button checkbox, it, it's just used inside these routes, the bundles itself will contain the checkbox, the checkbox code and the button code, but the first bundle that, the, that the, your user will download Will, not con will contain neither, it will just be the smallest possible code to get your app running. And then when it lazy load that route, when, you, when the user try to access that route, it will uh, download the button code because the button code will be part of that bundle, but not the checkbox code. And um, so, we, so uh, we split the code so you don't have to load everything and it's like, oh God, but yes, trust me, it's like magic, basically. It's, I don't have anything. Um, I just want to take the next five minutes to talk a little bit about the future of uh, the CLI. Um, so this is the stepping stone. Like we start, we're just starting to build the CLI. Uh, we're doing a lot of progress there, but uh, there is a lot coming up uh, in the next few months, in the next few years, in the next few releases. Um, so first, we want to get to a point 
you might have noticed, those of you who uh, installed the CLI might have noticed that it's quite big and it takes a long time to install. You don't have to install every day, God, good, good thing, uh, but you still have to, um, it's still frustrating to start like an NPM install and have to wait like a minute or more. So we are really aware of that and we're working uh, strongly towards making faster uh, install times. And that's not including Yarn. Um, for those of you who heard about Yarn, Yarn installs NPM packages faster. For the CLI, it makes a significant difference. Uh, but even then, we want to improve by like 60 to 80% the install time that you use in NPM for the CLI. We want to separate uh, the CLI from a toolkit, which is basically a JavaScript module uh, that will make your, uh, that will, you will be able to require import and then use um, as part of your own tooling. So if you're building an, e an ID or if you're using like Visual uh, Studio or a code, a VS Code or a WebStorm, um, you can actually, those tools can actually use a toolkit to build, understand, and improve on your applications directly from the tooling. And we want to separate those so that uh, we allow developers to use uh, the CLI without you know, passing through a command line, which can be a little bit uh, junky for tools. Um, and we want to provide to you guys the refactoring tools uh, so that you can build like scripts as well that understand your app and that will also change it. So we'll evolve it over time. Like, add a new module, add a new import, uh, change your routes to be all lazy, for example. Um, a good example I came up, uh, that came up to me um, a, a while ago was um, taking, uh, taking all the routes from your app, statically analyze, uh, analyzed without building anything, and from there calculating the size of your route so that you can actually make bundles of the optimal size and these will be available using like refactoring tools where you can change the code and uh, update it to fit your needs. And with that will also come um, ng upgrade. Uh, you guys probably heard about it. Um, so with Angular moving forward, um, we're, we, adopt, uh, we adopted um, Semver. And so at some point, Angular 3 and Angular 4 and Angular 5 will come around and um, with probably a lot of breaking changes, and we want to make sure that you guys are not left behind, so we will provide a series of tools to refactor your code to uh, imp move your app from Angular X to Angular X plus one. And this will uh, be done using refactoring tools and ng upgrade tools. Um, Add-ons and scripting. Uh, so we heard a lot of talk about supporting add-ons uh, for the CLI and uh, scripts. Scripts for me are, what I'm saying by scripts is basically just a tool, uh, um, a one-time task that uses a CLI to upgrade, scaffold, build in a different way or something like that, your, your, uh, your application. And um, add-ons are more for changing the behavior of the, uh, of the CLI itself. So we know that like, we, don't, we cannot solve everyone's problem. Uh, there are still some people that will have like, some special process, some enterprise that have special needs, and we wanna fit those. And the way that we're gonna fit those is making available to you ways to change the behavior using extensions and add-ons, uh, changing the behavior of the CLI itself. And of course, as an example, like the two first and the two for, for first most uh, projects that we're going to support using add-ons will be mobile and universal. Um, so for those who don't know, mobile allows you to create like uh, progressive web apps, for example, and manifest files when you build your app. And this will be supported by using, of course, add-ons. Uh, so you install an add-on to build an app using a mobile um, framework and it will create you a bunch of, uh, it will create you all the necessary files for you to be mobile friendly. 
Universal is the way uh, that Angular can be compiled in the, anywhere on the server or on desktop. And um, again, we want to support that inside the CLI. And the way that, was, that we're going to do that is using add-ons. And of course, we want to also support library development and uh, NPM deployment. Uh, one thing that I didn't talk too much about is that you can also deploy your apps uh, using the CLI to GitHub pages, but we'll support more in the future. And uh, one of those that we want to support is NPM deployment. So you want to create a li uh, library. You have a bunch of things uh, that you, you have a bunch of components that you want to make available to the world. So you'll be able to create a new project that's a library with the CLI and deploy it to NPM. And pro a lot more. We have a lot more on our roadmaps. I don't have the time to share it with you but I, really, I, I would really like it. If you want to come to me and talk to me, we're really open to uh, suggestions, to issues, and to uh, pull requests. And we have an awesome team of collaborators. Uh, I'm not going to name all of them, but each one of them is crucial to the project and really awesome. They're making crazy works, and we're really proud of them. And that's it for the CLI. Um, hope you guys try it. Hope you guys come back to us and tell us what you think about it, and we'll, and we'll definitely have a lot more for you guys in the future. Thank you. <laughs>